What's up people, Marker here. I want to cover a topic that's being debated as much as whether pineapple should go on pizza. And FYI, the answer to that is a straightforward hell no. It definitely shouldn't. Pineapple should go where it belongs, on those little sticks at dinner parties or down under the sea. Now, what question am I talking about? Should you stretch before you work out? Now, what an absolute doozy of a question because this has long been a debate in the fitness world. Should you? Or should you not stretch before you go smash some weights in the gym? So what's the answer, Mark? Well, it depends. And just like that, we're back to square one. Not what you probably wanted to uh, to hear. But now, in all seriousness, let me explain. And I promise by the end of doing so, you'll never have to think twice about the answer again or the question again. And I'm going to use some research to back me up in this. So I'm not just talking at my arse. Now, talking about research... There was a research review that was published in December of last year, 2022, by Ewan et al. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. And the aim of their research was to research a bunch of studies done on the effects of long-term stretching on strength. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details of the review right now because I don't want to bore you with all the details. But I'll pop the link in the description below in case you fancy checking it out for yourself. So long story short, they reviewed studies that took place over a 30-year period on the effects of stretching versus no stretching on strength and whether or not they had a positive, neutral or negative impact on the strength itself. And they looked at things like types of stretching and the effect on strength when done before or after workout, as well as the duration. And what were the outcomes? What did they find? Now, overall, they found that stretching did not have an impact on strength. Did not. But they did find that performing static stretching before a workout did have a little bit of a negative impact on strength. But all importantly, they noted that this was trivial at best and wasn't significant enough to be considered meaningful. Now, that's very important to note. They also found that the length of the study resulted in a greater impact on stretching, greater impact of stretching on strength periods roughly over the three month mark. So long enough. Now the reason behind this is most likely down to neurological reasons. What is that? And that's because it's thought that stretching can reduce maximal voluntary muscle activation, AKA the maximum amount of force and strength that a muscle can produce. Hope that's clear. In conjunction with neural drive, more big words mark, AKA the body's ability to recruit motor units and activate the muscle which can result in less force being delivered by the muscle now in layman's terms you've taken a bit of a zip from the muscle so it may not feel as punchy well that's the thinking anyway there's also been other studies that have shown long-term stretching may result in a reduction in the stiffness of a tendon stiffness um, now, which, if you weren't already aware, has a pretty big impact on uh, your strength levels. But I must stress this. All this is to be taken with a bit of a pinch of salt. We're not talking about a calorie deficit where we know for definite that it's not needed. Oh, that it is needed for fat loss. None of this is absolute. None of this is set in stone. This area needs way more research before we can start giving absolutes and save it saying for definite yes or no answers. No black or white things here. So what the hell does all of this mean? What have I just been telling you? And more importantly, what does this mean for you and your training? Now, overall, the, the findings show that stretching, no matter what form or shape it takes, isn't going to really harm your gains. Music to your ears. So should you stretch before or after your workout and is it okay to actually do so? Now, from what the review has shown, it seems to be fine. But you may be asking yourself, what about the negative effects he mentioned a few minutes ago? I want to know what the hell they are. What was he talking about? Why is Mark talking about himself in the third person? Now, unless you're a serious strength athlete who is fixated on making maximal marginal gains with their strength training, then five to 10 minutes of stretching in your warm-up isn't going to kill your progress. But if you are someone that's focused on trying to maximize their strength, but you also enjoy stretching, like myself, my advice would be to do it at the end of your workout as part of your cool down. 
or separate the two into completely different sessions entirely. Now, you might still be there scratching your head because you've always been told that you need to stretch before you do any sort of exercise, especially weight training. Otherwise, your chances of getting hurt increase. The short answer to that is no. You do not have to stretch before you do any type of physical activity, and you certainly don't have to do it to stop any injuries from occurring. Just ain't true. But the answer isn't as black and white as that. Far from it, actually. Now, there are several reasons why you would stretch before resistance training, and one of them actually does include injury prevention, but this is different than saying stretching alone will stop you from getting hurt. So why would you stretch before a workout? Maybe you enjoy stretching and it improves your performance, even if it's just the placebo effect and you think it's actually helping you when it may actually not be helping you. If it helps you get in the zone. I'm in a zone, man. I'm in a fucking zone. Would you relax? And gets you into a position where you're ready to have a great workout and smash things, then it makes complete sense to include it in your, in your workouts. Next reason, you include some form of stretching in a form of a dynamic warm-up. Now, gone are the days of doing 10 minutes on the treadmill, followed by a few static stretches and calling that a warm-up. And well, I actually, I say gone are the days, but sadly, they're still lingering around, um, unfortunately. Now, I prescribe some sort of dynamic warm-up before all my training sessions, both for myself and all my clients, no matter their level. A good warm-up should be specifically tailored to the main movements in a training session. So, for instance, before I train deadlifts, you'll see me perform dynamic stretches like these for my hamstrings and hips to get nice and loose. The goal is to increase the range of motion and flexibility in and around the main areas of the body you'll be using. So when you go through those big movements like your deadlifts, your body is primed and ready to perform to the best of its ability. Simply put, you're giving yourself the chance to perform at a high level, no matter what level of experience you may have. Personally speaking, after a few minutes of dynamic stretching, my heart rate goes up, my body temperature has risen a little, which helps me feel ready for the session ahead. I feel like I'm ready to smash some weights. Now, the next reason is pretty similar to the previous one, but I, I wanted to separate it. And that is you may perform some form of static stretch in your warm up as it helps you optimize your training performance. How does it do that? Now, a second ago, I just told you that static stretching can decrease maximal strength. So let me explain just a little bit of what I mean. Let's say you're a road runner and you just started a new strength program. You may very well be doing that right now. And let's say you're squatting on a Monday, but you have some stiff ass ankles. And as a result, your ankle mobility, mobility, mobility is dog shit. It's crap. A common complaint amongst most runners I've ever worked with. Now, a little side note, I've worked with people who have ran the marathon in three hours, but lacked the ability to do a single bodyweight squat. Most of that came down to some below par lower body mobility including some pretty dreadful ankle mobility. Right, so you've got shitty ankle mobility. You perform an ankle mobilization as part of your warm up, maybe something with a band, with a kettlebell. You then elevate your heels with some small plates, which we know helps with your depth and overall movement with your squat. But something still doesn't feel amazing. Then maybe you introduce a box. This helps the situation. You start to squat a bit better again but your shitty ankles are still letting you down. Now, this could be a great time to then perform some sort of static stretch for say 30, 60 seconds, maybe even two minutes, depending on how much change you wanna actually create in the muscle. Now, calf flexibility has a direct impact on ankle mobility, hence why stretching them can be beneficial. You then go back to squatting and while I like magic, your squat's improved. So how about we apply this to someone who has a ton of experience with training and is actually strong as shit, stronger than most people they meet. Maybe they have a dodgy, uh, stiff right ankle. Um, not referring to myself or anything here. Um, and maybe 
performing a small 30 second static calf stretch before they squat helps their ankle mobility, which in turn improves their movement. And as a result, their squatting technique is better. Now, this is a great example of correctly using a static stretch before you work out and using it in the right manner and not as part of an outdated prehistoric warm up. Oh, and a better squat, just before I go on, also means less chances of poor technique occurring. And poor technique, as we know, increases the chances of an injury showing its ugly face. Remember, poor ankle mobility can cause an individual to lose their, their brace neutral spine during a squat. And when you're lifting with load, that's when problems can occur. So while stretching alone doesn't have a meaningful impact on injury risk, it does, however, play a part when you look at it from this viewpoint. Okay, hope that's a bit clear. So knowing all this, if we revisit the question I posed a few minutes ago and look at it through a slightly different lens, the answer should now look a little bit different. Do you need to stretch before you work out? No, no, you do not. But should you stretch before you work out in the form of a dynamic training specific warm up? My suggestion is yes. Why? Because in my opinion, it's just beneficial. It's going to help you perform. It's going to help you move and perform better. And if you move better, your ability to produce force through correct lifting technique is going to increase. And obviously goes without saying that if you move better and your technique is better, your chances of getting hurt go way, way down. But then again, actually, Shit just happens from time to time, no matter how good your warm up is and your lifting technique is. Right, let me wrap this up and summarize that really quick. You don't have to stretch before you work out, but if you do stretch, the research suggests it ain't going to impede your performance. A great option is including some dynamic stretches in your warm up and leaving longer static stretches to the end of your workout or separate sessions altogether. Right, I hope you found that um, that's somewhat helpful. It's been for a long time, a very confusing topic. So hopefully I was able to shed some light on it for you, even just a little bit. No joke. These videos take me a shit ton of time to edit. So if you found any of this video valuable and any of it all, or actually any of the other pieces of content I've produced, you could really uh, help a guy out by hitting the like and subscribe button on my page and this video. I promise I'll repay you with bigger and better videos uh, somewhere down the line in the future. You can also check out this box right here if you fancy getting stuck into another video right now. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, you're a legend for watching and um, I'll catch you soon.